Hey there guys, today we're taking a look at Monster Hunter World running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U. Now this is with 16 gigabytes of RAM. The game is currently running at 1080p with the lowest graphics preset and the performance that we're getting here is pretty much going to be a above 30 FPS average, but for the most part, even with the 1% lows, we're going to be hitting around that 30 FPS mark. We're not really going to be going much higher than this. It is at least a very consistent experience. Now the 16 gigabytes of RAM are doing some work here because if you see the RAM usage that we're at here is about 10 gigabytes now this is with directx 12 api running as well the game defaults to directx 11 personally i've found 12 to provide the most consistent gaming experience 11 is just one of those things where you're going to get lower averages and it's going to introduce some input lag here and there in terms of the frame times will spike more when you're on directx 11 so dx 12 for sure is the way to go with this game but depending on the exact system that you have it might introduce crashing so for the most part just running it on the 5500U. I have not run into any issues here. So you should be in the clear here, but there are other chips that might have issues with DirectX 12. Overall though, the performance that we're getting out of this at 1080p is at least playable enough, but really this is one of those games that's going to benefit more from play being played at 720p. That being said though, this game running at 1080p is not completely out of the question. If you're perfectly fine with a 30 FPS average, you can get away with playing the game like this no problem. It really is one of those things where if you don't have the fps counter and you're just playing the game you're probably going to get sucked into it and you're not really going to think about the performance too much and especially for such a budget entry level chip this is really great performance because you are at least going to be able to play the game on here and that's really more than you can ask for really considering the fact that this is such an entry level chip this is pretty much at this point about as low as realistically you should go i really am not a fan of any of the ryzen 3 based cpus or even any of the i3s they're just at a performance performance category where not much more money gets you significantly larger amounts of performance you know going for a four core even four core eight thread cpu in this day and age just really does not make that much sense compared to just going with something like the 5500u for maybe a couple hundred dollars more now really it is going to be region dependent you know there are some regions where the difference between going with a ryzen 5 and a ryzen 3 can be substantial we're talking about like you know pretty much multiple months of salary difference here and in those situations while i feel like the ryzen 5 is the way to go still just because of the longevity if it is between you having absolutely nothing and actually being able to play at least some games then maybe the ryzen 3 is the way to go but for the most part even in those desperate scenarios i think going ryzen 5 is the way to go because of the fact that at least it will last you long you know and like that matters a lot when you're in this budget category because you want things to at least last you a while you'll be able to at least get good performance out of them for years to come that way you don't have to make such a monumental purchase again just a couple of years down the line and i mean there is going to be a noticeable difference when you're going from a four core eight thread cpu to a six core 12 thread like what we have here you know it's going to just improve the overall experience of using the computer especially when you're doing multitasking things you know like if i had this open with discord running in the background and you know maybe i was just listening to music along with just talking with my friends on discord that is other things happening in the background that's going to eat up CPU cycles. Now, for the most part, it wouldn't matter if it wasn't for the fact that we were, you know, thread limited. If the game itself is just using all four cores and eight threads and you end up in a situation where the CPU is pretty much pegged to 100, well, now Discord and your music and that stuff running in the background is going to actually start to affect things because it's going to start eating up cycles that the game itself could just be using. In this kind of scenario, well, the CPU is really not going to be a limiting factor. If you see, we're just slightly above 50% usage most of the time, which means that half of the cores aren't doing anything. They are just chilling in the background. So if I was just on Discord or if I was watching things on YouTube or on Twitch on the side, that would not really affect the gameplay at all. So those are the kinds of things that you really need to consider when you're deciding what kind of chip you want to get here. Obviously, the 5500U is essentially being retired this year and it's being replaced with the 5624, the 5625U, which is just a re-release of the 5600U. So we're looking at a slight bump in CPU performance here, but the iGPU performance is going to be identical. So the level of gaming performance that you're getting here, you're going to pretty much be getting out of the 5625U. Specifically because of the fact that most of these games aren't really CPU limited at all. They're just going to be GPU limited. So increasing CPU performance is really not going to net us much of a difference a lot of the time. But really, I would overall just consider the Ryzen 5s over pretty much any i3 or Ryzen 3 based 
based system just because I mean you're going to be able to at least play certain games. This is not going to perform this well on a Ryzen 3 and especially not on an i3. You're just not going to be able to play these kinds of games. If you're an indie addict and all you do is play indie games, sure, go right ahead. You know, a Ryzen 3 or a i3 is going to do just fine in those types of games. If you're a huge Stardew Valley fan, if you're a Minecraft fan, and I'm talking van vanilla Minecraft, you're not modding anything, you're going to be able to do that on an i3 or a Ryzen 3. But if you actually want some decent levels of performance for a reasonable price where you're not spending over a thousand dollars on a laptop, you know, you can get something for five hundred dollars that has this level of performance. I think you could be very, very happy and it's going to last you just a lot longer than any i3 is going to end up lasting you. I mean, the level of performance that we're getting here is not incredible, but it really doesn't need to be. It's a cheap laptop and we're getting at least an above 30 FPS experience in this game and our frame times are very, very consistent. What more could we really ask for in this scenario? Overall, I really just cannot complain about the level of performance that we're getting here or the price of this laptop. This is really great performance in a game that I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy playing on here. It's not barely running. This is good enough performance where if you grew up playing this on a console, you probably are used to these frame rates. But anyways, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. I know the uploads have been very inconsistent in the past few days. I have been going through some personal shit. It's just been annoying and uh, I mean, I'm past all of that now, hopefully for the most part. And uh, I'll I really uh, just want to get back into uploading way more consistently because I mean, that's what I enjoy. I don't really like not doing things on here. So it's just one of those things where these past few days, specifically the last week, have just been absolutely brutal. And again, I'm, I'm glad to just be past any of the dumb shit that was happening behind the scenes. It's just a really dumb thing. But on the plus side, I'm very motivated to actually start streaming and I might actually start doing that. I might actually start streaming either here on YouTube or on Twitch. Not 100% sure yet. I'll leave a link to my Twitch down below just in case if I do start to just stream on there. I'm kind of really leaning towards streaming on Twitch if I'm being honest. But if you're interested in taking a look at that, obviously check out the link to the Twitch down below. I'm probably going to start streaming on there sometime this week or next. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.